Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. You will notice that you can you can hear my voice. It is uh, Oliver Partington speaking. Uh, you can't see my face. So after doing uh, five of these webinars, uh, the last one uh, that we had in place for 2020, uh, the technology has failed me somewhat. So um, we do have our, our guest panelists on the screen and they will be going through the content today uh, and I will do my best to bridge the so today we are going to be focusing on an issue that is only going to become more and more important to the decorating industry uh, as we move into 2021 and beyond. And to be frank, something that's going to be important to all of us in our day-to-day -day lives, and that is sustainability. In particular today, we're going to spend our time talking about the importance of indoor air quality. And I just wanted to go into a little bit of detail on this before uh, I introduce our, our guests that we've got today. People spend a shocking 90% of their lives indoors and 60% of that time is at home. Something that through 2020, I'm sure you, you will all have experienced um, even higher percentages. And if you're anything like me, it's probably more likely to be over 90% locked in the spare room um, trying to hide from pets and small children. And with op occupants of these buildings spending so much time inside, whether that is in an office building, whether it's in a school or whether it's in somebody in your own, in your own home, the materials that we use during the construction or the refurbishment or even the redecoration of those buildings becomes hugely important. And it's vital that every building material helps to minimise any negative impact that that building could have on people's physical health or their well-being. And those buildings as well are responsible for 39% of global carbon emissions. So at the same time, it's really important that the materials both limit any negative impacts on indoor air quality, but they also help us to reduce emissions. Now, I'm delighted to be joined today by an absolutely fantastic cross-section of guests who are really going to help us delve into a lot more detail and talk about improving indoor air quality uh, reducing emissions and the specific role that we believe painting coatings can play in that. So uh, to start with, a uh, massive welcome to Chris Ward, uh, the Principal Briam Consultant at the Building Research Establishment, or the BRE for short. So good afternoon, Chris. Afternoon, Oliver, uh, and thank you very much for having me today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we've also got Nick Woodmore with us. Uh, Nick is the Senior Sustainability Manager at Leading Fit Out and Construction Specialists ISG. So good afternoon, Nick. Hello. Hello. Um, we are rejoined by our very own Duncan Lockhead, who is the Commercial Sustainability Manager at Axon Bell. So afternoon, Duncan. Hi, Ollie. Hello. And we have Rebecca Cowling with us as well, who is our Senior Brand Manager for Dulux Trade. Hi, yeah. Hello. Hi, Rebecca. Uh, just a reminder for everybody listening in today, um, we are going to attempt to do uh, a live Q&A, which Duncan will be, uh, will be supporting on at, uh, at the end of the session today. So as we go through any of the detail with, uh, with the panellists, if you've got any questions that you want to ask, you should see on your screen um, a control panel that allows you to ask questions. So if you just pose those to, uh, to the team, uh, we will bring them up at the end. So Chris, I want to kick off by bringing you into the conversation um, to talk about the importance of indoor air quality and specifically your role in assessing it in buildings as part of BRIAM. So for the benefit of everybody listening, uh, probably a good place to start would be, could you just tell us a little bit more about, about BRIAM? Yeah, no, no problem. Um, yeah, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so yeah, just, just for, Everyone out there, uh, BRIAM is uh, the acronym for the Building Research Establishment Environmental Assessment Method. And um, we're the world's well, first and longest established um, sustainability rating um, method for the built environment, uh, focusing on buildings mainly. Um, we're now in our 30th year since we launched in 1990. Um, our overall aim is to drive more sustainable outcomes in the built environment and encourage innovation. Um, that's through rewarding performance that goes beyond regulatory baselines and standard in the industry practice. Um, 
the sort of diagram in, in, in the bottom of, of the screen sort of attempts to illustrate that. We have five rating levels um, ranging from pass all the way through to outstanding. Uh, even a pass rating is demonstrates performance beyond those, those regulatory minima and uh, you know, standard industry best practice. Um, we started off as a UK standard. We've now um, expanded over, over 30 years and we're a truly global standard now. Um, we have partners um, who've adapted uh, BRIAM to um, their local conditions in the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Germany and, and Spain. And we also have offices now in China and the USA. Um, our technical um, requirements that go into our standards uh, are all science-based and representative of sort of industry good and best practice. And we operate third-party based certification process uh, that ensures sort of independence and, and credibility. Um, we also adopt a holistic approach to, um, to sustain sustainability. So we cover the whole broad range of, of issues as you would expect from energy and water through to materials and waste. And obviously to today's topic, how health and wellbeing. Um, next slide, please. This slide is just to give you a bit of a an illustration of, of, of the sort of diversity of, of um, life cycle stages and, and sectors that, that, that we cover through our standards. Um, yeah, we also operate um, the SQL branded scheme for infrastructure projects and um, the Home Quality Mark scheme, which looks at new build homes in, in, in the UK. Um, but as I say, all, all of our uh, schemes are, have both UK and international versions, and they cover the whole life cycle stage of a building from new construction through to in use, through to re refurbishment. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide just to give you a bit of an illustration of the reach and, and impact Bream has had uh, over the last 30 years. Uh, we're pushing 600,000 buildings certified. Uh, we're over 2 million projects registered now. And I think we're operating in, in 89 countries, well, we, we've certified projects, I should say, in um, 89 countries now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's been a growing business over, the, over those 30 years and it, and it continues to grow to this day. Uh, next slide, please. So what um, do our users sort of get, yeah, what are the benefits that they gain from, from, the, from the BRIAM process? Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the key benefits is that independent assessment of, of a project's performance. Um, there's also a growing evidence or body of evidence now that um, there is a rental and sales sort of premium on, on green buildings. Um, and yeah, that can, can be up to, to sort of 30% increase in, 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 in value. Um, and I think one of the criticisms that sort of comes back, well, it costs a lot of money to put sustainability um, features into buildings. Uh, well, that might be the case for if you're targeting those sort of higher ratings like excellent and out outstanding. It, it, yeah, there, there will be an increased capital cost probably in those cases. Um, but sort of independent research that we, we, we've undertaken has shown that those additional capital costs are paid back pretty quickly through savings in, in operational costs, such as energy and, and water use. Um, the other thing, um, obviously Briam's covered health and wellbeing aspects for, for many years. And again, there's a growing body of evidence out there of the sort of links between things like thermal comfort, indoor air quality, visual comfort, and workplace productivity. So a green building also equals a, a healthier building. Um, that's probably enough uh, on, on the sort of background to, to, to bring and I'm conscious we've, we've got a lot, lot to talk about. So Chris, um, Briam changed fairly significantly uh, two years ago, so in 2018, specifically the, the indoor air quality portion of uh, health and the health and wellbeing section. So it's probably just worth um, explaining, I guess, a little bit about how and, and why that happened. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, just as, as I say, we, we, we try to keep up with regulatory changes and industry best practice. So we're, we're on a cycle of probably a four, four to five year cycle of, of updating our standards to ensure they yeah, maintain their relevance and, and they do reflect sort of current best, best practice. 
Um, as you say, our, our new construction scheme in the UK was was updated back in 2018. And yeah, one, one of the key focuses of, of that update was on the indoor air quality um, requirements in, in the health and wellbeing section. Various reasons for that. There's, yeah, it, it's general, air quality in general has been a bit of a hot topic in the last five years. Um, most of that's sort of come on sort of from, from, ex, from an external point of view, things like the Volkswagen um, diesel gates scandal, scandal with NOx emissions from, from, from vehicles. Um, and obviously it's, it's highly relevant now in, in, in terms of um, COVID uh, and you know, the, the need for yeah. um, good ventilation, effective ventilation in, in, in buildings. So it's, yeah, it's an area we've, we've always sort of covered, but it seem, seems to be in, increasingly important over the last few years. There's also other factors that have, that have, that have come, come online in the last five years. There's initiatives such as the Well Building Standard that's come out of North America, which has shone a spotlight on, on health and well-being issues um, uh, in, in, in the built environment. Um, but yeah, go, going back to, to the, the, the specifics of, of, of the BREEAM uh, indoor air quality issue, um, it was probably back in 2015 now, we were approached by a number of sort of stakeholders to say that our current VOC emission related criteria for construction products, including paints and coatings, probably weren't representative of European best practice. Um, so yeah, I think we, we we sort of took that feedback on, on board and performed a, a review of um, um, sort of international standards for party labels in terms of VOC emissions. Sorry, I should have said Nick, next slide, please. Um, so yeah, I think we, we we took this sort of international we did this international review to see how what other countries were doing in terms of labelling their construction products for for VOC emissions and um, yeah we 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 found that yeah the the, the, the BREEAM requirements at that that time were sort of probably standard practice now and we were needing to to sort of rate, raise the bar in in that area. A uh, slide here just gives a bit of an illustration of some of the um, initiatives that are out there. Uh, both in Europe and, and North America. Um, so I think there's, uh, there's probably one there with the A plus label in the middle of the screen there with the, with the French writing in France in 2014, I think it was 2014 or even might have actually been 2011 actually, um, the French government introduced um, regulations that required um, the labelling of construction products including paints to, 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 to show um, the impacts the VOC emissions from from those products, obviously with the A plus label, um, representing a very low emitting um, product. Um, I think probably on the back of this and um, uh, various other initiatives have expanded across Europe, and I think there's some some illustrations there on, on, on the screen of, of those where where they're, 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 these organisations are offering third party certification that a product has met um, VOC um, emission limits. Uh, similarly, there's a couple of initiatives um, that we're aware of in, in, in the North America, um, Green Guard and Indoor Air um, Advantage uh, in, in the bottom right hand corner there. So, yeah, and I think, and we, we, we say we, we did this review and we were sort of confident that all of these, that, that those initiatives highlighted on, on the screen there were, were representing current best practice in, in Europe and, and North America. And so we, we developed requirements uh, for our international new construction scheme, which was launched in 2016, based around the requirements in, in these initiatives. Uh, I think we, we did engage with stakeholders at, at the time, including Axo Nobel, to, to, to come up with this, what we thought was the, um, the best approach for, for, for the international market. And um, as I say, we, we operate a UK um, focus scheme, which was, which was last updated in 2018. So as part of that, we brought those international requirements into the in, into the UK um, standard, and uh, I guess probably yeah um, the UK market in terms of labelling um, their pro products for, for for VOC emissions is probably well quite a way behind where where Europe are well where where, where Europe is on on this matter. So we thought this was 
yeah, a, a good way to sort of yeah try and get the, the UK market to to sort of move move forward on on this issue. Um, so yeah, we, we we brought in some 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 quite significant changes uh, around the way we we approach the VOC emissions um, from construction products um, requirements in, in in the UK 2018 standard. And when um, when you talk about sharing best practice, I know you you briefly mentioned, I think, on the slide before uh, the well standard. Um, you know that there are other other standards that are, that are out there other than BRIAM, but I, I gather that, that you, there is there is quite a bit of collaboration that happens with them. Yes. So yeah, I think um, sort of the well building standard sort of came came on on probably on the European market sort of 2014 2015 time um yeah so they were North, North American based um, or, um organization and I think they're obviously quite keen to, to to make an impact grow grow their business um but I think we uh, uh, early on we, we, we saw that they were complementary offerings sort of brain covers covers that has that holistic um, assessment of sustainability issues, including health and well-being um, related issues, whereas well is focused on yeah, health and well-being, well-being issues, and probably builds on and yeah, complements the, 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 the requirements in BREAM. So um, rather rather than make them a, a competitor and a, an enemy, we decided the best place for, for, for both organisations mm. was to work to, together. And I think there were various projects showing interest in the, in the prime bream and well on their projects so we got together to come up with some guidance that showed how um the bream requirement complemented the the well requirements and and and, 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 and vice versa um i mean yeah, we, we published guidance on that um a few years ago now when uh, on, on version one of, of the well building standard uh, their second version came out a couple of months ago, and again we've worked with them to to develop guidance on on that to show that, that those complementary issues. Um, similarly, there's another uh, health focused standard that's come out of North America in the last few years called Fitwell. It's probably less um, um, yeah, probably less, less prescriptive in in terms of the requirements compared to Well, probably so Well light for for want of a better phrase and again we, we, we've we've teamed up um with um the center for active design who run the fitwell standard to produce similar guidance to to that with, with, we produce with, with, with well to show the complementary complement complementarity between fitwell and, and, and the brain requirements great well thanks thanks chris for going through that i think it's a really a really useful overview i mean a couple of bits for me i guess it, it really feels like there's a there's a global effort here and um, it's not just about the UK and I suppose from a from a personal point of view I suppose I haven't really um gathered that that we were lagging lagging behind so it's it's sort of great to see global best practice and standards being used um across the globe and, and us benefiting from it in in the UK as well I think just a another point that um that came through loud and clear for me when you're talking about the the value of of Briam and using it as a as an independent um, environmental assessment method um, it goes back to the, the payback as well you know I think um, a lot of the time with sustainability you talk about the, the triple bottom line and, and how important um, making money is still uh, in delivering sustainability so it's great to link the two actually that that pay out, that payback of the initial capital outlay does come through uh, in um, operational costs in the future um, right so We've heard about the the assessment methods that uh, that we need to follow and the improvements that are coming through with uh, with Briam or have already come through with Briam, but it's probably useful now to turn our attention to what does this mean for our customers and uh, the clients of our customers as well. So on that note, Nick, it's probably a good time to bring um, bring you into the conversation if that's okay. Yep. To start with, it's probably worth you just. Um, giving us a bit of background about your role and um, and what ISG do. <clears throat> so ISG are a large scale construction services company specialised in fit out technology and construction. Um, we operate across multiple geographies on completely differing scales of projects. And my role specifically is the senior sustainability manager. Um, I work in a small team and 
simply put, we try and decrease environmental impact, increase social benefit from our projects and improve well-being for the end user. Okay, that seems easy. Um, <laughs> why, why is there, so why, why do you think that there's an increased focus now on well-being? So you think of your, your end users and your, your clients that you work for. Um, why do you think there's that increased focus on well-being on on new and refurbished buildings? Uh, I think it comes from a, a real awareness of the impact that the products that they're exposed to have on, on their staff. Um, so that it's particularly relevant in offices where we're, we're quite sedentary and we sit at a desk and work for X number of hours a day. <clears throat> we spend, sort of, as I said earlier, 90% of our time indoors uh, in that environment. Um, and companies spend somewhere in the region of 80% of their total outlays on staff costs. So they, they really want to improve their, their productivity and their experience when they're working. And um, it's, it's for everyone's benefit, really. And it's, it's just a tweak to the way you look at the projects. And um, before it, it would have been about performance of the product in terms of its durability and, and the colour and those kind of aspects. But now there's a longer term how it's going to interrupt staff over a, the, the full life cycle of a project. It's that this end user experience. And I guess for, for you guys at ISG and you you in particular, what what motivated you to get as clued up about this particular topic? So when we're talking about VOCs, when we're talking about BRIAM and, and well standards. Well, the, the assessment schemes um, are a key driver, um, like Brown, and, and we're often having targets set across multiple assessment schemes on the same project. So we're having to be aware of a, a lot of different certification requirements uh, that apply to the same product. So the paint and Duluxes products in particular have a, have a number of study and, and testing certifications that mean that they can tick those boxes, but also give a real world um, benefit um, in use. Uh, it's, it's about the client coming onto the project and, and not feeling like they're in a dirty old world construction site. Um, one in particular, one instance I can remember quite clearly is one of our clients came over from America and walked onto the site and said it didn't smell like a construction site. It was clean, tidy, and, and it was, it felt innovative to him that there was a lot of work going on, but it didn't feel dusty or it didn't smell of. So it, it was a, an innovative approach to construction that seemed a bit a to, to the American market. It'd be interesting Real to see if the, it'd be interesting to see if the the smell of the construction site finds its way onto client assessments for you in the future. Hopefully not. And I know we. Um, We've we've got ISG supporting us on some refurbishment work at our our office in in Slough in the next uh, couple of months. So um, I'll pass that message on for people to smell and see if it's uh, see what it's like. And I guess turning our attention to to paint specifically, why why do you think that paints why do you why do you see paint as particularly important in this conversation? Well, we, we take a, a sort of risk based view of everything, and the largest surface areas uh, are the ones you have to be most concerned with when it comes to indoor air quality. Um, so the majority of what is painted and some ceilings painted and, and even some floor finishes are painted. So they're, they're the surfaces that the, uh, the end user again is going to come into contact with and, and they have the largest surface area to off gas into the internal environment. So if, if you control the largest surface areas on the project, you're going to decrease your negative impact. And uh, if you go for really low emission products, you're going to have a cleaner space come the end of the project. It, it's, it's about what's the biggest bang for the buck. And um, make, make sure that you take on the, the largest chunks of the project first and make sure they're right, and then work on the smaller returns. Yeah, I remember a project manager once saying to me when I was walking round a round a site and we were talking about paint, and he was saying that paint is um, like 0.2 percent of the spend on that project, but it, it accounts for 80 percent of what you see in the building. 
So mm-hmm. it, I, I guess it's a, it's a lower cost value, but um, in terms of the physical space, and particularly when you talk about off-gassing, it, it does play a more critical role. Um, and the last question that I've, I've got for you, Nick, how, how are building materials developed to, to meet the needs of the industry, to meet the growing needs of your clients and the assessment uh, criteria that are being put in place when it comes to healthier products? Uh, well, I think it's, it's taken manufacturers uh, thinking more long term about what the direction of travel is and, and trying to meet those requirements now. Um, it, there's a plethora of um, assessment methods like the World Building Standard and BRIAM and LEED, and, and they all focus on indoor air quality. Um, but also the um, embodied carbon now is, is a key aspect. So companies need to be forecasting uh, what the requirements are and try and build their products for that more stringent set of requirements that are coming, which I, I think Dulux are on that that road. Um, so we, we need our, we're, we're nothing as a principal contractor without our supply chain. Uh, we, we just manage the project as a whole. So we need our subcontractors and their suppliers to come with us on that journey. So it's it's cool that we, um, interact with our supply chain as much as possible and sort of spread it to make sure that everyone's improved uh, and trying to head towards the, what the future targets are going to be and not just standing still and meeting the needs that are there today. I think that's, that's actually a really important point to end on. I think, um, you know, when you talk about sustainability and, and trying to meet those future goals, I think it does require a lot of collaboration. That's certainly something that we've learned and um, you know it's great that we have um really solid assessment criteria in in Brian, but we should be working working collaboratively to to move things one stage further and stay ahead of the curve so i think that that point around direction of travel is is really important and um i think it's really useful as well just just listening to what what you've said that the the demand from clients is actually coming from a positive place you know it's not just about hitting hitting certain targets about doing what's what's right for, for the people. And particularly when you talk about 80% of people's outlays is on staff doing the right thing for them um, is really important. So I think, um, Nick, thanks thanks for that. And Chris, thank you for, for your section as well. I think what's really, um, what's really clear is there's, um, there's that growing demand in the marketplace. There's that need from clients. There's the right assessment criteria to help us measure indoor air quality. Um, to a, to a much better level than we we could have done maybe two three years ago, and um, I want to now just just bring in uh, Rebecca and and then Duncan into the conversation. So, uh, Rebecca, now we've heard I guess from from Chris and Nick about that growing focus on indoor air quality and the changing demands of of our clients. What what happens next? What happens next from a from a product point of view from a from a paint perspective? Yeah, well, following the um, the changes to the BRIAM scheme in 2018 to include new emissions criteria, um, we immediately set ourselves the objective of being able to offer our customers, particularly those in the new construction center sector, a range of broad wall emulsion products that meet the new exemplary standards set for emissions. And um, we really we wanted that range to include the most commonly used emulsion products. So that would be a contract mat, a standard mat, and a durable mat product. So we, we started a project and we briefed our R&D teams to start looking at the knowledge and research we already have within this area and the different technologies and formulations that we have across the business and um, particularly in, in Europe with our paint business there. And, and how we could achieve this objective whilst most importantly maintaining product performance and the attributes that our customers look for in this type of product. Um, and here we are in, in 2020, after months of work and testing and overcoming various different hurdles and challenges, launching our new Airshore product range. Um, initially, the range will include two new products, um, Airshore Vinyl Mat and Airshore Diamond Mat. But then we'll be adding to these in 2021 with a new improved formulation upgrade for our Super Mat product. And then in the future, we hope to add more products to this range and aim to bring the technologies used within these formulations into our core formulations. When we look at uh, what, what is the, the Dulux Trade Airshore range, well, products in the Dulux Trade Airshore range not only offer 
professional quality and the performance you'd expect from a Dulux trade product, but they're also 99.9% .9 VOC free to minimize the impact on indoor air quality, have low emissions, and have an equal or lower carbon footprint compared to the standard formulation. They also, they're also compliant with the indoor air quality requirements set out in BREEAM 2018 to the new exemplary level, LEED version 4.1 and WELL version 2.0 to enable our specified customers to achieve maximum credits for their paint specifications and help them meet their sustainability objectives. If we now look at the individual products themselves in a little bit more detail, thanks Sarah, um, our new Airshore vinyl mat product offers excellent opacity, coverage and finish as you'd expect from a Dulux Braid vinyl mat product and is suitable for all normal interior wall and ceiling surfaces. It has a lower carbon footprint and actually when you look at the white, the carbon footprint is 38% lower when compared to standard Dulux Braid vinyl mat white. The spreading rate is up to 17 meters squared per litre with a two to four hour drying time. So exactly the same as our current standard Dulux Trade vinyl mat. So that's the vinyl mat product. And then the other product that we're launching now in the range is the new Airshore Diamond Mat product, which offers a tough, durable mat finish you'd expect from a diamond mat product. And actually, when you look at the sheen level, it's it's only just over two, so it's around up for the pure brilliant white. So it's actually slightly lower than our standard um, diamond matte product. So so that's that's quite a good positive with with that product. It's also achieves a Type C scrub scrub rating when tested to BS seven seven one nine. It's also successfully tested to ten thousand scrubs, exactly the same as our current diamond matte. It offers stone repellent technology and scuff resistance, same as you'd find in our current diamond mat, and it is available in the full Dulux Trade tinted color range. Although I do have to add, it is tinted in our depots, not in store, so it does need to be ordered into your Dulux to, to the DDC that you're purchasing the product from. Um, it's also suitable for normal interior wall surfaces, um, and again, same as current diamond mat, has a spreading rate of up to 16 meters squared per litre, and a four to six hour drying time. Um, something else I just want to kind of point out about these two new products, and um, particularly interested in this will be contractors. We recognize that round 9010 is a very popular color in the new construction sector. So it will be available in a ready mix color in both of these two products, that's Airshore Vinyl Matte and Airshore Diamond Matte, in addition to the standard white or PBW that you offer. So I've, I've spoken a little bit about these two products um, and I'm sure one of the questions you're wondering is, is why are we launching additional SKUs and not just reducing the emissions in the standard variants that we have? Um, and, and really the answer is it's not as easy as you might think to reduce the VOC emissions whilst most importantly maintaining the desired application and performance attributes that customers look for in these types of products and or keeping costs the same. But in the future, this is definitely something that we are we are aiming towards. So then the final element that I just wanted to cover was the product testing, just to give you the confidence in these new products and that they're gonna perform. So, so prior to launching these, as we would do with any new product we bring to market, we've put them through rigorous in testing to ensure that they meet our high standards, the application, performance and of course the emissions testing. So for applications, the products were, were first evaluated by our in-house team of application specialists to ensure that they were happy with the products. Then following that, we went on to, to carry out market trials in our GLAPS Academy. This is where we invite decorators and contractors in to come and try the products to, so that we can get an opinion, so we can get their opinion on what they think of the products. And then finally, we progressed it to market trials where decorators and contractors can use the product in, in real market environments. And then providing that everybody's happy with the products against all, all phases of that testing, that's when we're then happy that we know that the customers will like the application properties of the products and we're happy to progress. We then had testing from a performance perspective. And, and you know, as with any new product launch, we have we have a whole host of, of general tests that we carry out, which include things like looking at the finish to make sure that, that the product delivers a really good finish, 
the gloss level, the opacity and coverage, the drying times, the, the scrub ratings, stain and scuff resistance, and of course, whiteness and color, just to make sure the, the product is color accurate. And then finally, um, one of the key points of today is the emissions testing. Now we actually used um, an independent test house called, called Eurofins, who are an accredited laboratory, and we follow their indoor, indoor air comfort gold testing scheme, which is based on ISO 16000 and EN 16402. Um, and as you can see from the graphs on the screen, the uh, the green line along the bottom is the emissions rate for the airshore products um, over 28 days or at three days and then 28 days. And the top line is the, the standard product. And you can see when you look at the, the top graph, which is airshore diamond mat versus um, standard diamond mat, just how much of difference there is in terms of emissions. When you look at the emissions levels at, uh, at 28 days, um, current diamond mats still giving off um, 2.5 micrograms per meter cubed compared to the um, airshore diamond mat, which is at 0 0.005 micrograms per meter cube. And you can see a similar pattern with the, the vinyl mat, the, the airshore vinyl mat and the standard vinyl mat below. So, so that's that, those are the new products and that's the testing that we've carried out to, to give you the confidence in the new products, thank you. Great, thanks a lot, Rebecca. It's a really good overview of some some exciting innovation that I know has been a, a long time in uh, in the making for you in particular. So so well done, um, Duncan. Now that Airshore is is out in the marketplace, now that we've launched the product, what what does this mean for our customers in their day to day roles? Uh, yeah, thank, thanks, Ollie. Um, well, essentially, I. Uh, I think it, it really means it makes things easier for customers. Uh, and for me, really on, on three counts, you know, so if, you know, if you or your customers are, are looking to use paint products that are high quality and that last, but still do that, you know, complying with the requirements of uh, green building standards that, that Chris was talking about, then, then you now have a solution. Um, a little bit more broadly, secondly, you know, if you or your clients are are looking to to do all you can to to look after the people in your buildings or the, or the buildings that you paint, then you have a solution, a, a well-being solution. Now, intuitively, well, thanks for making me big, uh, Sarah. Um, intuitively. Uh, I'd also just say that um, that indoor air quality uh, element feels particularly uh, particularly important for, for buildings like, well, well um, uh, Nick mentioned offices, absolutely. Uh, but also just flag things like care homes uh, and hospitals, uh, schools where our kids learn. Um, but actually you can see it being applicable across, across lots of different sectors. And actually I'd just also say for uh, painting contractors listening that, uh, you know, if you're responsible for the well-being of uh, the painters you employ, uh, actually, uh, now you have another low VOC solution for your teams. You know, who are the ones who are uh, potentially most frequently exposed to the VOCs. Um, and then thirdly, I think slightly differently, if you or your, your clients are on a, a net zero journey, uh, or as Nick was talking about, you're just looking to lower uh, overall carbon emissions generally, uh, then you now have a, a lower carbon paint solution. But just, to, just going back to that, um, just to underline a point, going back to that first point about compliance. And if we take, uh, you know, Chris's um, 3M scheme as an example, so Airshore uh, helps you secure credits not not only in the indoor air quality section but also in the innovation section because these are products that pass at an exemplary level um so and of course just also to flag that um another making things easy bit uh 
uh, you, you can now you know dip in and grab the uh, the certification to prove that uh, you know at the click of a button they're up and running or already online on the Julox Trade website. So no more having to chase the manufacturer and saying, "Where's my proof? The BREM assessor is giving me JIP," you know that type of thing. Um. So yeah. So and and just also just um, underlining something that Rebecca said. You know, Airshore Diamond Map is is the kind of uh, shining star here, um, not only because it's kind of step change in, um, you know, in formulation, but we're also kind of hitting three three sustainability ambitions. Here. You know, we're hitting we're hitting lower emissions, great for for well being. We're hitting lower carbon, uh, good for the planet. But you know, we're doing those things whilst at the same time being able to do durability, and that's that is really technically quite hard. And if, we, if we're doing that durability bit, you know, we're helping uh, keep buildings looking better for, for longer and helping to extend maintenance cycles, which of course is great uh, from a resource, uh, a resource efficiency perspective. So, uh, so I, know, um, I know this sounds a little bit uh, grandiose, but you know, by, by launching Airshore, we are, uh, we are looking to transform the industry um, you know, our, our company has a, a, an ambition for a solvent-free future, uh, and we do kind of take that seriously. Um, so as Rebecca was said, you know, uh, was saying we've, we've, we've kind of done, um, raised the bar with Airshore. We will look to uh, continue in that direction, uh, and we will look to introduce that ultra low VOC tech into, into other products uh, as we progress. But it's not all about Airshore because uh, I'd just like to flag that Airshore is kind of one uh, of a number of um, important solutions for improving the sustainability of decoration. Uh, I just flag that, you know, we also uh, need to remember uh, waterborne paints for trim. So things like quick dry gloss and diamond satin wood um, let's not forget <clears throat> Evolve. For those of you who don't know Evolve, Evolve is um, uh, a matte paint made with 35% recycled waste uh, as a raw material. Uh, by the way, it's 11% lower carbon too, so that's another good point for that. So actually, Evolve for the ceilings and Airshore Diamond Matte for the walls feels like a really uh, strong uh, and compliant sustainability spec. Um, so yeah, essentially, it is it's time to to change those specs. Uh, you know, quite often we see specs used again and again habitually, but it's time to change those specs so that we get these more innovative modern products uh, used more more widely. Um, but we can't kind of do that on our own. You know, changing transforming the industry is a massive task, and we and we do really need. We need help. We need help from uh, those responsible for specifying what paints are used. Uh, Nick, for example, uh, we need help from painting contractors who are quite rightly are often uh, are often seen as the paint experts. Uh, so we need painting contractors to be bringing these products to to the attention of clients uh, and recommending recommending their use. Uh, and uh, I'd also just for those within our own organization who are in the audience today, you know I keep banging on about this stuff, but actually we do want a more sustainable future for our industry. So, you know, let's shout about it from the rooftops and make sure everybody hears about it. So going back to the to the original point, Ollie, you know, uh, what does it mean? Uh, I guess it it makes it just makes it easier uh, for us all to make a difference. And I know, Ollie, you, you know, you are a believer and you want to see the sustainability profile of our industry uh, going in the right direction. Uh, we face challenges, do we not? Uh, we do. And I am a, a believer. -er. Um, you know, I, I make no, um, no apology for the fact that the, the past couple of sessions that we've had have been building a narrative up around around sustainability and around having a positive impact. You know, when we were discussing on um, the webinar last month, we, we talked about the three waves 
you know, in terms of challenge that we're facing, the, the immediate wave of um, the pandemic and managing that and hygiene, and the slightly bigger wave after that, which is the economic fallout of COVID-19. But then the biggest wave behind that is the impending environmental impact that, um, that we're facing into. And, you know, there's, there's taglines that come out all the time, but the one that um, sticks the greatest with me is the fact that we're, we're the first generation that's, that's realised what we're, what we're doing to the planet and the impact that we're having. And we're the only generation that can do something, do something about it proactively. And I think that's, that's relevant for all of us. It's why, um, you know, it's why everybody is, is on this call today and why we've got you guys as, as guest panellists, because there is that genuine feeling of responsibility that, that I share along with, um, with you guys, I know, to, to help lead the industry forwards. I guess the final point that I'd, I'd just make, Duncan, is, um, is reiterating a point that, that Nick said around predicting direction for travel and around collaborating and working with, within your supply chain, because um, we have to come together, collaborate and innovate to, to help us face into some of those environmental challenges. And, and hopefully for everybody listening today, you can just you can see how Airshore forms forms part of us us trying to do that. And I would just encourage everybody to 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 work with us to continue that innovation journey as we take the next the next stages forwards. So look, uh, Duncan, Rebecca, thank you for taking us through the Airshore proposition. Hopefully, everybody that's that's listening today can can see the value, and um, particularly when. Uh, we were lucky enough to listen to Chris and Nick to start with to go through the context of, of what's happening in the industry today. So we do, have, we do have nine minutes left, fortunately, so we do have a bit of time to open up to some questions. Um, I am handing this over to Duncan with, uh, with two minutes notice before we started today. So Duncan, I'm, I'm hoping that you've, you've worked the tech out and you can compare the, uh, the live Q&A. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Ollie. <clears throat> um, right, uh, I will try and uh, scan and read at the same time. Uh, actually, I think this one's quite good. Uh, so this is one for you, Chris. Um, we have a question that, do you see Briam uh, generating a standalone standard that focuses on, on health and well-being? Do you see that as a possibility in the future? And I don't think so, um, Duncan. I think we, we, we sell ourselves as that holistic sustainability assessment method, with health and well-being being a, a key key part of it. Um, and yeah, obviously, health and well-being is one part of a, of a sustainable building. Um, you still need to do your carbon savings, as, as you've alluded to, and, and all of those other things to meet the challenges we that sort of Oliver's pointed out that we're going to have to address quickly in, in, in the coming years. But okay. as I say, I should yeah. add to that, we, we, we will still continue to sort of work and collaborate with others that are offering those health and wellbeing and specific um, standards and, and, and look to sort of generate sort of synergies where, where, where we can. Great, thanks, Chris. Um, there's a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Rebecca, if I uh, turn to you, a couple of questions on colour. Um, one about the um, the, the full colour range. Uh, just just asking for clarification on what's ready mixed and what's available. Um, you know, tinted. Perhaps you could just cover that again. Yeah. So 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 um, for the Airshore vinyl mat, that's available in a standard white and ready mixed Rail 9010. Um, and and for Airshore Diamond Mat, that's available in a PBW ready mix RAL 9010. So mentioned um, in, in earlier on, the um, they are it's available in the full colour range, but it is tinted in depot. So that's any Dulux trade colour that you get tinted on a normal Dulux trade product, it'll be available in this product. It's just tinted in depot to order. So that's everything in the Fandex, the, the professional colour card, any of the 14,000 colours that are on the system. Great, yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, um, Nick, I, I, actually I just had a question which I, uh, I just want to um, uh, throw in. So with this being a, a difficult, uh, difficult year, 
do you find that you know COVID has has had um, a kind of negative impact on trying to make your projects more sustainable? Um, it's increased people's ability or, or open people up to being more flexible so people are in the mindset of trying to do things differently at the moment anyway which allows a bit more maybe innovation to be integrated into the project which makes doing things more sustainably more uh, sort of acceptable within the way the project operates but we have fewer people certainly fewer people on the project sites so at the same time it's difficult to get face to face with people to make sure that people are bought into things so there's two sides to it that i think that there is opportunity um to do things better at the moment but getting people physically into the buildings to get them working on it is is more difficult so it it's it's a gift and a curse at the moment so no no one solid answer one way or the other from from me on that one but i guess it has increased the focus on you know um our lungs and our health and well-being generally yeah yeah i've seen a lot more articles about ventilation systems in the mainstream media than ever before and mm. obviously paint is part of the the experience you, you have in a building while the air is being turned over so yeah, there's there's definitely more of a focus on it at the moment. Great, thank you, thank you for that. Um, what else have we got in here? Uh, so this is. Um, so I, I I might just pose this to you again, Nick. Actually, so with Sorry. home working. Uh, homeworking becoming the new norm potentially. Do you see the, um, you know, the interest in health and well-being certification of office working workplaces diminishing in the future? Uh, well, I personally see it increasing because people need to prove that, the, that it's a healthy, inviting environment they're providing for their staff to draw them into the office. So I don't know what everyone else has found, but I find it more difficult to collaborate with people virtually. It's, it's very different. So I think everyone wants a mix of in-person and virtual. And, and I think that offices probably will move to a different mix of desk space and breakout and collaboration space over time. So the, the need for offices and, and healthy offices, it hopefully will remain. Indications are that way. Can I jump in on, on follow up on, on that point, Duncan, if that's OK? Um, I guess the, the other thing um, that, that's happened in the last few years, there's been an explosion of consumer devices that sort of claim to measure indoor air quality. There's things like food bots that you can have in, have in your uh, home that sort of um, measure all, all sorts of indoor air quality parameters. and. I'm, mm. I'm assuming that yeah, people will, will be having things on their watches and, and, and all sorts of things in, in, in the future. So that there, there's going to be a scenario where there's office workers in a building measuring those 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 the indoor air quality on these devices, going back to facilities management and saying, look, we've got a poor atmosphere, do something about it. So I think those building owners they're going to have to sort of demonstrate what they're doing to maintain that indoor air quality in one way one part of the solution is proving that they've the products they put in the buildings are, are, are low emitting so yeah as not like not like nick says i don't think it's an issue that's going to go away anytime soon yeah that's a really good point thanks chris i, th I see we're, run we're sort of shortly running out of time so i'm just going to read this one out yeah. it's quite a nice nice little story so uh, this is from francesca uh, i wish this product was available a year and a half ago when i had a product requiring internal redecoration of an archive containing very delicate and valuable historic books and paperwork uh, we'll still specify products blah, 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 but with the worry for the voc effect on the delicate archival papers this would have been perfect that's a nice 
I've never really thought of that. Thank you for that, Francesca. Um, Ollie, uh, well done for coping with being uh, distant. Do you want to just have a quick final wrap up? Yes, please. Thank you for, for dealing with the, the questions, Duncan. And, and thank you, everybody, for submitting questions in. Some really, really interesting ones there. I would say for, for anybody that sent in a question uh, that we weren't able to answer, we'll follow up with you individually after the session. And we'll also share the answers to any additional questions on our Industry Insights Hub on the Dulux Decorator Centre website afterwards. Uh, I would say as well, for anybody that wants any more information on the new Dulux Trade Airshow range or any other details around Briam, um, you will be sent up a, a follow-up email with some initial information. And just please reach out either to, to myself, because my details will be in the follow-up email, or directly to your account manager for some more information. Um, I wanted to say a massive thank you, Duncan, Rebecca, Chris, and Nick, for your time today. Some really, uh, really useful and really interesting insights. So just thank you for, for giving us your time. And um, a big thank you to everybody who's joined us for what is going to be our, our final webinar of, of 2020. Uh, we wish you all a, a safe and happy festive break, and we look forward to working together in 2021. Thanks, everybody.